to give people love other rappers. I believe there are some gay rappers. They just ain't came out the closet. Homeland Security agents converging on the home of Sean Diddy Combs. Well, officials confirm the raid is tied to a trafficking investigation. Yes, you wonder what's going to happen next, Diddy. The drama around Diddy is heating up, and now it looks like Snoop Dogg is stepping into the spotlight with some juicy details about his time with Diddy. Word on the street is, Snoop's got some tales that aren't just about the good old days. This chatter might have something to do with a recent shockwave hitting Diddy's world. His swanky pads in Los Angeles and Miami got raided, stirring up trouble not just for him, but for his kids, too. Before this chaos, rumors were already flying about Diddy's behind-the-scenes dealings, and now, Snoop's hinting he's got the lowdown on some of those shady happenings. So what's Diddy been up to? I mean, we gotta kick it and he's like yo why don't we like go shopping this i mean like i paid for it and i was like this Here's the lowdown for those catching up. Diddy's posh homes were hit by a surprise raid, putting him in the crosshairs of a federal investigation led by the big guns in New York, the U.S. Attorney's Office. What's coming next in this saga? Now, things are getting even more serious with the Department of Homeland Security stepping in. Rumors are swirling that Diddy is wrapped up in some heavy accusations, including essay and kidnapping. These aren't just whispers. There have been actual lawsuits filed against him in New York City, suggesting this isn't the first time Diddy's faced such grave charges. A lawsuit that landed in federal court last December is cranking up the heat with some damning claims against Diddy. In the past, he might have brushed off these kinds of accusations, but the situation's different now with the legal vice tightening. Homeland Security agents rummaged through Diddy's homes, looking for any shred of evidence like documents, phones, computers, and other gadgets that might hold incriminating info or footage. The New York branch of Homeland Security has made it known that this sweep is part of a bigger investigation, with teams from both Los Angeles and Miami pitching in. They've promised to spill more details as they unearth them, hinting that this story is far from over. Gossip has it that Diddy made a quick exit from his mansion just as the cops were closing in, managing to dodge them. Though they didn't catch Diddy, his sons, Christian and Justin, weren't so lucky and ended up in cuffs. This move has sparked a lot of backlash, with folks blasting Diddy for putting his kids in such a risky spot. I've seen one of the many burning questions today is, where is he? Where where was Sean Diddy Combs while these raids were being carried out at his residence? With Homeland Security's rep for not messing around and showing up ready for anything, there was real worry about what could happen to his sons. Just picturing those armored vehicles rolling up is enough to send shivers down your spine. They don't hesitate to act if they sense any danger. So the idea of Diddy leaving his children behind to face that music has people stunned. Rumors even flew around that Diddy had bolted to some secret island with the law hot on his heels. But as it turns out, he wasn't making any dramatic escapes. He was actually spotted just hanging out near an airport in Miami. I guess you wonder what's going to happen next, Diddy. Some people are buzzing that Diddy was playing a slick game, trying to throw the cops off his trail and slip out of town without anyone noticing. The day after the chaos, Diddy's lawyer hit the airwaves hard, slamming the raid as overkill, comparing it to something out of a war zone. He went off about how rough the cops were when they stormed into Diddy's places, pointing out how rough they were with Diddy's kids and the people working there. Diddy's lawyer was clear. Diddy wasn't arrested. He actually chatted up the cops on his own terms. He made it a point to squash the rumors flying around. No arrests for Diddy or his family, and nobody's travel plans got clipped. The lawyer, Aaron Dyer was all, this raid, plus all the media jumping on it, looks like a rush to pin something on Diddy based on some shaky lawsuit claims. He's calling the whole thing a groundless hunt for a scapegoat. Dyer was adamant, no court has ruled against Diddy on these charges, both criminal and civil. He's all in on proving Diddy's innocence every step of the way. This news sent shockwaves online, sparking intense debate. Someone pointed out, the feds hardly ever lose. If they're knocking on your door, they're pretty sure of their case. Looks like Diddy might be in deep trouble. Another person threw shade about Diddy buying property under his daughter's name, suggesting shady dealings. And of course, 50 Cent couldn't resist the opportunity to stir the pot regarding Diddy, quickly jumping on Instagram to toss a few jabs. 50 Cent's now-deleted Instagram post said, Feds are hitting up all his places. Can't believe they even put his kids in handcuffs. He then cast doubt on Diddy's chances of bouncing back, saying, It's not a question of did he anymore, it's more like Diddy's done. He made it clear he believes the law wouldn't move without solid proof. To dive deeper into why Diddy's facing such heat, let's look back at the Cassie lawsuit that's been hanging over him. On November 16th, 2023, Cassie took a bold step by filing a lawsuit that shone a light on years of alleged AB and mistreatment by Diddy. Sean Diddy Combs, the rapper and music mogul, is accused of assault and years of abuse in a new lawsuit filed by R&B singer Cassie. Cassie describing the music mogul as a vicious, cruel, and controlling man, saying she was trapped and held down by Combs. She's now suing him for what she says happened during what she's calling a of 
This lawsuit paints a dark picture, claiming Diddy took advantage of his former assistant, Cassie, starting when she was just 19 and he was 37. It accuses Diddy of pushing her towards substance use, which took a toll on her life. Cassie claims Diddy had a tight grip on everything, from her money to her health records. She even mentioned an MRI showing memory loss, blaming it on the toxic environment Diddy created and the substances he supposedly pressured her into using. In 2016, Cassie tried to break free from Diddy's hold, which ended up causing such a stir that the cops had to step in. Scared by Diddy's volatile nature, she didn't press charges. Diddy's response? Showering her with fancy gifts, trying to smooth things over. But according to Cassie, especially in her music, the reality was far from the glittering presence, with Diddy allegedly keeping her isolated in hotels to recover. Diddy was accused of deeply troubling exploitation of Cassie, including pushing her towards interactions with male escorts for his own twisted satisfaction. These weren't just for fun. Diddy used the videos as a way to keep Cassie under his thumb, threatening to expose her if she dared to challenge him legally. Escaping Diddy's control was a nightmare for Cassie. He reportedly wielded his power to cut her off from friends and family, leaving her scared for her safety. In a shocking turn in 2018, Diddy was accused of breaking into Cassie's apartment and forcing himself on her. Even after Cassie managed to distance herself, Diddy didn't back off. Instead, he obsessively kept tabs on her. As if Diddy's situation couldn't get any worse, a new, serious charge came to light. A woman, choosing to stay unnamed, brought forward a lawsuit claiming that back in the early 90s, Diddy and singer Aaron Hall attacked her and a friend at Hall's house. She shared that the incident took place after a party organized by MCI, where Diddy and Hall began to behave inappropriately towards them. Just when you thought it couldn't get any more scandalous, Diddy and Hall pulled Jane Doe and her friend into what they promised was an after party at Hall's place. The lawsuit says Jane Doe was pushed into being with Diddy, and her friend was in a similar situation with Hall. Not long after, Diddy supposedly showed up at Jane Doe's place, got hostile, and attacked her, all because he was scared her friend would spill to his then-girlfriend. And there's another lawsuit on the horizon. This one from a girl who was only in 11th grade at the time. She's accusing Diddy, along with Harve Pierre from Bad Boy Records and one more person, of crossing lines back in 2003 at Diddy's studio. This young woman met Harve Pierre in a Detroit lounge, which led to a horrifying experience in a New Jersey studio. This serious allegation involves taking a minor across state lines for nefarious purposes. This whole ordeal echoes the troubling stories surrounding R. Kelly. Jane Doe, looking back on that night in Detroit about two decades ago, recounts how Harve Pierre took notice of her, praised her looks, and bragged about his connection to Diddy. The ordeal ended with Miss Doe alleging that Pierre coerced her into unwanted acts, leaving her feeling violated. In a particularly distressing moment, Miss Doe ended up alone and in agony on the bathroom floor. Eventually, she managed to get some help and was escorted back to the airport for her return flight to Michigan. Amidst this turmoil, a lawsuit implicates Daddy's House recordings and Bad Boy Entertainment, highlighting that Miss Doe's memories of her trip back are blurred, with her most clear recollection being the early hours of the morning in her car. Diddy finds himself in the midst of another legal legal battle, this time brought on by producer Lil Rod, who played a pivotal role in the production of Diddy's Off The Grid album. Lil Rod is suing for a staggering $30 million, citing harassment and intimidation, directed at himself and multiple women, along with a slew of other serious charges. The lawsuit lays out a laundry list of allegations against Diddy. It accuses him of manipulating Lil Rod into arranging encounters with SE workers and coercing him into participating in unwanted SE acts with them and others. Alarmingly, it also alleges that Diddy spiked the drinks of guests at his opulent gatherings without their knowledge. Furthermore, the complaint includes accusations of parties at Diddy's mansion that featured underage girls and SE workers, with some women allegedly having their drinks spiked on Diddy's command. The lawsuit implicates several other notable figures in the scandal, among them Diddy's associate Christina Corum, Universal Music Group CEO Sir Lucian Grange, and the former CEO of Motown Records, tying them into the unfolding drama. Miami has pointed fingers at Ethiopia for being tangled up in this legal mess. Amidst the chaos, Jones alleges in the lawsuit that Grange was coerced into marrying him. The lawsuit also accuses Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group of being part of a RICO scheme with Diddy, failing to monitor or control Diddy, his son, and his chief of staff's actions. RICO, short for the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, involves illegal collaboration among individuals or organizations. Jones is not just looking for a slap on the wrist. He's demanding a hefty $30 million in damages, but Diddy's lawyer is hitting back hard, calling Jones's claims pure fantasy and accusing him of trying to grab headlines. The lawyer claims to have solid proof that Jones's allegations are made up and says they've gotten no reply from Jones's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, despite trying to reach out. Sean Hawley, Diddy's lawyer, is gearing up for a courtroom showdown, vowing to tackle these outlandish claims head on and take action against the accusers. According to Jones's lawsuit, back in August 2022, Diddy himself reached out to Jones to work on the R&B album, The Love Album Off the Grid, which snagged a Grammy nomination after dropping in September 2023. 
free. Jones describes a steep decline in his life after agreeing to collaborate with Diddy. He claims Diddy harassed him not just at his homes in Florida, Los Angeles, and New York, but also on a yacht Diddy had rented in the U.S. Virgin Islands. This harassment, he alleges, consisted of relentless and unwanted groping and touching. In his lawsuit, Jones shares a troubling account of being forced to work in Combs' bathroom, while Combs showered behind a transparent glass. When Jones sought help from Christina Corum, Diddy's chief assistant, he was brushed off, told that Diddy was just being playful and showing affection in his own way. Jones levels serious accusations against Corum, alleging she played a part in facilitating Diddy's essay against him and even pressured him into a homosexual relationship. Jones also claims he was coerced into hiring SE workers and participating in Essie acts with them to please Combs. In a bizarre twist, Combs supposedly gave Jones a bad boy baseball cap, telling him to wear it at a Miami spot as a sign to SE workers that Diddy was in the area and that Jones was scouting on his behalf. Jones paints Combs as domineering and relentless, a man who doesn't take no for an answer. He leverages his status in the hip-hop and business sectors to pressure Jones, even threatening physical harm if Jones didn't comply with his wishes. Moreover, Jones claims to have heard Combs bragging about dodging legal repercussions for shootings. He describes an instance where Combs showed off his ability to get away with shooting people, making Jones witness this disturbing boast. In a more specific allegation, Jones mentions Combs confessing to a role in a 1999 nightclub shooting in New York City with rapper Shine, real name Jamal Barrow. Despite these serious claims, Combs was acquitted of any possession and bribery charges linked to that incident. The lawsuit reveals that while Barrow ended up with a 10-year sentence, Jones felt totally under Combs' control, unable to refuse him. It highlights Combs bragging about his vast sway in the music world and ties to the police. Jones even mentions having video and audio proof supporting his claims against Combs. The suit says Combs won Jones to keep the cameras rolling, often grabbing Jones's phone to record himself. Jones claims he has countless hours of footage showing Combs, his crew, and guests in compromising situations. On a specific note, Jones alleges that on February 2nd, 2023, Combs drugged him, leading him to wake up confused in bed with Combs and two SE workers. Jones's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, made a statement using the Latin term res ipsa loquitur, which translates to the thing speaks for itself. This suggests the evidence within the lawsuit is clear and undeniable. Jones claims he was effectively on an unofficial contract with Combs and never received compensation for his contributions to the Love album. The lawsuit accuses Combs, Love Records, Motown Records, and Universal Music Group of exploiting Jones's efforts for their gain. This case isn't just a spotlight on Diddy. It's bringing attention to a network of high-profile individuals implicated in these alleged misdeeds. A surprising twist in the lawsuit involves actor Cuba Gooding Jr., as unveiled by legal documents TMZ got a hold of. Jones describes an unsettling scenario where Diddy seemed to be offering him up to others with an introduction to Cuba on Diddy's opulent yacht leading to a particularly uneasy and awkward situation. Jones claims that Cuba Gooding Jr. started making inappropriate moves on him, crossing lines until Jones had to physically push him away. As evidence, Jones showed a photo of Cuba embracing him, suggesting Diddy had control over Cuba and didn't stop him from making these advances. Then there's the issue with Young Miami. Jones accuses someone close to Young Miami of making unwanted moves on him. He says this happened during Thanksgiving Day in 2022, while he was with Diddy, Young Miami, and her crew. Jones tells of a moment when this person related to Young Miami barged into the bathroom he was using, leading to unwanted touch. Despite Jones's attempts to fend her off, she didn't back down and even behaved suggestively in front of Diddy and the rest. Jones also claims Young Miami was among those who got paid by Diddy for certain favors. In September 2022, things escalated at Charlie's studio in Los Angeles. Jones recounts a chilling moment when a buddy of Diddy's son, Justin, was shot right near him. Moments after Diddy and Justin stepped out from the bathroom, he describes the harrowing sight of the victim dealing with the gunshot wounds. But Jones adds a twist, claiming Diddy pressured him to mislead the cops with a tale of a drive-by. Justin Combs and his lawyers are hitting back hard against these accusations. Justin's spokesperson has outright rejected these claims, labeling them as unfounded and an obvious scheme to shake them down for money. They've called out the allegations as utterly untrue, slamming them as the desperate acts of someone chasing a payday. They've also thrown down the gauntlet, threatening to take legal steps against any slander aimed at the Combs family. But the plot thickens, with Stevie J, a Grammy-awarded producer, from Bad Boy Records, getting dragged into the fray by Jones. Jones accuses Diddy of exploiting Stevie J's reputation to mess with Jones's head regarding his own SE identity. Jones also claims Diddy showed him a video, supposedly catching Stevie J in a compromising moment with another man. But the plot thickens when adult film star Knockout jumps into the fray on Twitter, stating the video was actually of him, adding more layers to this already twisted tale. Stevie J, not staying silent, has lawyered up to tackle these explosive allegations head-on. The plot doesn't stop there. Academics, the hip-hop insider, 
Insider, dug up some juicy details from the lawsuit. It suggests Diddy had intimate run-ins with a Philly rapper previously linked to Nicki Minaj and an R&B icon famed for rocking the Super Bowl and lighting up Vegas. While the lawsuit doesn't drop names, the buzz is that it's hinting at Meek Mill and Usher, sparking a wildfire of gossip as everyone scrambles to connect the dots. The air is thick with speculation, as the public pieces together this complex puzzle, this Diddy drama is quickly turning into something straight out of a Jeffrey Epstein scandal, making some wonder if the music world has its own shadowy figures pulling strings behind the scenes. The theory goes that once these big names get dragged into shady situations, they're easily controlled. Everyone's holding their breath, hoping the full scope of these sketchy dealings will come to light, not just focusing on Diddy, but casting a wider net to catch any other sneaky characters lurking in the shadows. As the investigation rolls on, there's a shared eagerness for the complete truth to spill out, and for any underhanded actions to be exposed. What's your take on this tangled mess of rumors and accusations? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and let's dive deeper in our next video.